Hey everyone, welcome to the Decorative Den, a look inside my craft room where I share all things crafting, planning, and DIY. My name is Charity, and I am so happy to have you here with me. If you are watching in March, happy National Craft Month. We are celebrating here at the Decorative Den with this fun spring-themed craft project. Today, I'm gonna be sharing with you how I made this woven rope and felt succulent wreath. And this project actually has two tutorials in one. So first I'm going to share with you how to make this woven rope base. And then I'm going to share with you my favorite way to make easy no sew felt succulents. So I will make sure to leave timestamps in the description below so you can jump to whichever part of the project you want to learn about. Or if you're interested in seeing this entire craft project from start to finish, then just keep watching. All right, so we are going to start with this woven rope base. And the first thing you're going to need for this part of the project is a wire wreath mold. And so you can totally use the wire wreath molds from the Dollar Tree. I got this 18 inch wire wreath mold from Michaels and really you can use any size you'd like. The other thing you're going to need is some kind of natural rope or cord. Again, the Dollar Tree rope would be perfect for this project. I am using this natural jute rope from Michaels. And then the other things you're going to need are some scissors, some hot glue, and some kind of tape. So this can be masking tape, washi tape, um, just something to help secure the ends of our rope. All right, so the first step is to unwind your cord and we're going to cut off a piece of cord that is a little more manageable to work with. And so I am cutting off a piece that is about two and a half yards or seven and a half feet in length. And before cutting my rope, I'm just going to take my tape and wrap it around the edge and then I'm going to cut it. And this just prevents the end of the cord from fraying and it will also make it easier to weave the cord through the the wreath frame. So that is exactly what I'm going to do next. As you can see, I am taking my rope and I am weaving it through the frame and I'm going to pull it so it is about halfway through the frame. So that way I have an even amount of cord on either end or either side of the wreath frame. And when I'm pulling it through the frame, I'm actually weaving it through over, under, over, under and alternating every other row. So that's kind of hard to explain, so I hope you can see it in the video, but essentially if I'm going, let's say for the first row, I'm going over the outside wire or wire one, then I'll go under the next wire, over the third wire, and then I'll go under the fourth or inside wire. And then for the next row after that, I will kind of repeat that pattern, but this time doing it the opposite. So if I went under the most inside wire of my wreath frame, I'll fold my rope over and go over that same wire, under the next, over the next, and then under the outside one. Anyway, you can kind of see what I'm doing here. The main point is just making sure that you are alternating back and forth with each wire and with each row. And that's what will give you this really nice woven like basket style wreath. And so this is definitely a time consuming task. I'm not going to lie. This took me probably the better part of a Saturday morning and I suggest just like popping on your favorite show or podcast, maybe catching up on some YouTube videos, but just kind of watching something and do this kind of mindlessly as you're watching something else um, because it is pretty easy to do. It just takes a while. And so for this first piece, like I said, I did pull my rope through so that it was about halfway through the wreath. And then you can see I worked both above where I started and below where I started. Um, and I'm only doing that for this first piece of rope. Moving forward, I am going to add all my other pieces of rope and just weave in one direction. 
So as you can see here, this is as much as my two and a half yards of rope got me. So you will end up using several pieces of rope for this project. And so each time you need to switch to a new piece of cord, the most important thing is to just continue doing that same over under pattern, alternating the same way you did with the last piece. So as you can see here, my last piece ended going over that inside wire. And so I started my next piece making sure it went under that inside wire. So that way I still have that same alternating pattern. And when the when we finish off the wreath and cut off all these loose edges, it'll look like one continuous piece of rope. Also, as you can see, when I start or end a piece of cord, I make sure to leave some extra material and we're going to need that when we finish off the wreath and kind of give it the end or finished look. And so I suggest leaving at least three inches of cord on either end. Um, I often left, you know, closer to four or five inches of material, but you'll see in a second why that is helpful. So you're just going to continue weaving your rope through the wired frame, adding pieces as you need, working your way around until you've covered the entire wreath frame. And once you've done that, it is time to finish off the wreath and get rid of all these extra pieces of cord. And so to do that, I'm just going to take one of these spots where I started and ended my cord and I'm going to pull everything tight to make sure it looks good in the front. And then I'm just going to take a generous dab of hot glue and add it to the back of the frame, securing my excess material to it. And I like to add a couple dabs of hot glue to this just to make sure that everything is secure. And I'll just press on the rope and hold it in place until I know that the hot glue has dried. Once that's secure, I'll just take my scissors and cut off the rest of the material. And I'll do that same thing with the other piece in that area. And so as you can see in this little section, I ended each piece of rope um, on the outside edges of the frame. And so to give it a finished look, I needed to take my rope and fold it over the edge of the frame and onto the back of the wreath. So that's one way of finishing off your wreath. You may also have spots like this next one. So in this one, I finished off the cords in the middle part of my wreath, not the edges. And so in this case, the rope is kind of already pointing in a certain direction. And so I just added my dab of hot glue in that same direction. So that way I wasn't fighting the natural tendencies of the cord. So for example, for this top one, the cord was already pointing towards the right. So I just added a dab of hot glue to the right of the cord and secured it to the back of my wreath. I'm doing the same thing with this piece, but this time towards the left. And that's it guys, you'll just go through and do that same thing for each section of rope where you have these extra little dangling pieces. And then once that's done, you are all set. You have finished the rope or woven rope wreath base and it is ready for any kind of embellishments you'd like to add to it. So speaking of embellishments, let's move on to our felt succulents. So for this part of the project, you are going to need some felt. I just went through my collection and I pulled pretty much any shade of green I could find. I ended up using three different shades of green for this project. Feel free to use any colors you want and as many colors as you want. Now, in addition to your felt, you're only going to need two other things, a pair of scissors and some hot glue. So these are the three shapes of succulents that I have on my wreath. And the best thing about these succulents is that all three of these are made using the exact same steps and the exact same process. The only thing that's different is the shape of each succulent's leaves. And so on the right here, I have a very angular succulent. Um, it looks almost very aloe-like. And for this succulent, I cut the leaves in 
kind of a traditional leaf shape, very pointed. Um, for the center succulent, I ended up cutting the leaves with rounded edges and a flat top. And then for the succulent on the left, I have rounded edges that come to a point on the top. And like I said, the steps for all of these are exactly the same. It's just all about that leaf shape. So the first thing we're going to do is grab our felt and we're going to cut a couple of strips that are an inch and a half wide. And I don't measure for this. This is really just rough eyeballing here. Um, but we want them to be about an inch and a half wide because that is going to be the height of our largest leaves. And so all I'm gonna do is take one of these strips and freehand cut my leaves, making each one about an inch and a half in height. And as you can see for this succulent, I am making the leaves that have the rounded edges that come to a point in the center. And because I'm freehanding these, none of the leaves are perfect. <laughs> None of them are completely symmetrical and they all are slightly different from one another. Um, but that's something that I really am not worried about and totally would encourage you to just have fun freehanding these because once we get all of the leaves together, the slight differences really are not that noticeable in the finished succulent. And then I find with a project like this where we're adding lots of different felt succulents together, the more variation we have, the more interesting our succulents look. So that's why I call these my easy no-sew succulents because there's no template. We're really just having fun with it. So after I have a good number of inch and a half wide leaves, I do cut my strip in half, creating a strip that is about three quarters of an inch wide. And then I'll go through and create that same shape, but in a smaller version. And so I'm going to go through and cut several of these three quarter inch high little leaves. And then the last thing I'm going to want to do is cut some leaves that are right in between. So around an inch in height, because we want our succulent to gradually go from small leaves in the center, building out to our largest leaves on the outside. And so it's helpful to have some leaves that are kind of in between that smallest three quarters inch size and the largest inch and a half size. Now, once you have all of your leaves cut, it is time to assemble our succulent. So I'm simply going to take one of the smallest leaves and add a dab of hot glue at the base, pinching the leaf so it's folded over on itself. Once that's secure, I'm gonna grab a second small leaf and again, add some hot glue to the base and then wrap that leaf around the first one. I'm gonna do that one more time with a third small leaf, again, gluing the base of the leaf and then wrapping it around my little bundle of leaves. And then together, these three small little leaves create the center of our succulent. And that is true no matter what leaf shape you're using. So from here, I'm just going to slowly add leaves building out from the center of my succulent. And as I get further away from the center of my succulent, I will slowly increase the size of my leaves. And so that's why I find it helpful to lay out your leaves from smallest to largest, kind of like I did over here on the left-hand side of the screen, because that way it makes it easy to just grab the next leaf, add it to the next layer of your succulent, building as you go. Now the size will depend on how many leaves you use and how large your leaves are. So for smaller succulents, you may not want to go all the way up to the inch and a half in length leaves. Um, you may just wanna stick to the three quarter inch leaves and the inch leaves and just add less leaves in general. And definitely for a project like this, I do suggest having a variety of sizes. So building up some of your succulents with many layers and larger leaves and then also keeping some of your succulents very small because again that will help add some interest in our final project. So as you can see here, I have my three different styles of succulents and for each one I have a variety of different sizes. 
So now that we have all of our succulents made, it is time to actually assemble our final wreath. And so the first thing I did is I just went through and I placed my succulents without gluing them or anything, just kind of getting a feel for where I wanted my succulents to be. And also this gave me the opportunity to kind of play with the balance. So making sure that I had a balance of sizes and that the pops of color were evenly distributed throughout the piece. And for wreaths like this where we're only covering a portion of the wreath in florals, I generally think about a third to a half of the wreath being covered looks pretty balanced. And so for this one, I tried to cover, I'd say a little more than one third of the wreath. But definitely the number of succulents you use and the amount of wreath that you cover is totally up to you. Whenever you have your succulents placed where you want them, you're just going to go through and place a generous dab of hot glue on the bottom of each succulent, securing it to the rope. And when I'm gluing my succulents, I found it helpful to start in the middle of my floral pattern and work my way out on either side. That way, as I was gluing things down, if they moved slightly or if I decided I wanted to change something, I had a lot of freedom and flexibility because I only had those very center pieces glued down and I could slowly work my way out making any changes as I went. And that's it guys. Once you have all of your succulents glued down, your wreath is finished and ready to go. I absolutely love how this turned out and I cannot wait to hang it on my front door to decorate for spring. I really hope that you enjoyed this project as well and maybe feel inspired to try one or both of these elements yourself. I think this woven rope base could be really cute with a variety of different florals and different different styles of wreaths. And then of course, these felt succulents can be adapted to other projects as well. Anyway, if you did like this video, please hit the like button for me so I know and consider subscribing if you are interested in other crafting, planning, and DIY videos. In general, thank you so much for being here with me and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye guys. <music>